Welcome and thanks for joining me on Talk the Walk. I'm Sarah Wong. Overnight, actress Zhao Wei went from being one of the nation's biggest movie stars to seeing herself erased from the Chinese internet. No official reason was given, but her purge came at the onset of Beijing's crackdown on what it calls an unhealthy celebrity culture. What does this say about China's soft power campaign, and how does it fit into the recent wave of regulatory crackdowns on the mainland? Joining us today to discuss this is Chris Fenton, author of the book Feeding the Dragon, Inside the Trillion Dollar Dilemma Facing Hollywood, the NBA and American Business. Chris, welcome. Welcome to Talk the Walk. Great to have you here. Thanks for having me back, Sarah. This is sort of like a homecoming for me. Uh, I haven't been back in Hong Kong since uh, September of 2019, if you can believe that. Yeah, um, we, all of us here, I guarantee you, are hoping that our international travel will be resumed <laughs> soon. But um, before that happened, let's do this discussion through the internet first. Now, simple question for our audience here in Hong Kong who may not. Uh, be familiar with uh, the mainland entertainment industry or what the Chinese government is doing. Why is Beijing doing this? Well, look, I mean, there's a lot of reasons, and obviously no one really knows for sure what's going on inside the head of, the, of Xi Jinping or the Standing Committee or even the Ministry of Propaganda in general, which oversees the movie business and essentially all forms of propaganda. Um, but if you look at it in the most macro level, they have 1.4 billion people there, um, and they have to keep them just happy enough that they don't revolt. And one of the things is um, to do that is to create uh, a system where they get all of what they need and some of what they want. So that's real tangible achievements, pulling people out of poverty, bringing them into the middle class like they've done with 800 million people. But on top of it, it's creating a narrative that allows people to feel like they have a fair and balanced system, a system that looks out for them in a good way, and essentially caters to the idea that China is the greatest country on earth with the greatest government on earth. So a lot of what we're seeing, for instance, um, you're bringing up the disappearance of certain celebrities, is this, this idea that excessive um, materialism, things that look really showy as celebrities, something that uh, divides them from the rest of the people, starts to look really bad in the eyes of the Chinese Communist Party, and they want to try to mitigate that. They want people to feel like it, they're all in it together, and we're starting to see that disseminate through the entertainment business. We know that China has been very adamant in uh, clamping down or denouncing a so-called unhealthy celebrity cultural environment on the mainland. Why is a healthy one crucial to the Communist Party's governance? Well, a healthy one, I'm sure, can be um, defined in many different ways depending on the point of view. A healthy celebrity culture for the Chinese government is one that essentially caters the idea that they're creating this environment that really supports the government and supports the system that the government oversees. So a healthy celebrity environment, something that um, plays in that role, is something that allows everyone to feel a part of a system that works for them. So having billionaire um, celebrities mm. with entourages and jet planes and Lamborghinis and all this ostentatious sort of displays of wealth doesn't play into that. So they're trying to curb that back and say, hey, look, we support the entertainment business. We support certain successes or capitalism with Chinese characteristics, but don't flaunt it as much as it has been flaunted. You know, there's one thing that I don't you know, I can't quite wrap my mind around it, which is, you, you mentioned about materialism and how China, the central government, seems not to be keen to promote it. But we know that China's um, governance, essentially the dominant precision of the Communist Party in the Chinese political regime is heavily underpinned by China's economic success in the recent decades. So how do they, you know, demote the idea of materialism and essentially good a good life? How do they decouple that from the economic success that they're so proud of? 
Well, I think you have to remember that that China is inherently communist, right? And the Chinese Communist Party oversees the populace of 1.4 billion people. So part of that mentality is the idea that there's a very strong form of equal um, as, as disseminated through the populace. So the idea of having huge have-nots and huge haves um, and the divide of that breaking down sort of this idea that there's a middle class, a middle layer, really works against the Chinese government and what they need in order to have stability. So in a lot of ways, and there's a lot of talk of it here in the United States of America too, but there's this push to make everybody feel like there's a part of the, they're a part of the system and the system works for them. That's why you see a lot of propaganda um, documentaries about all the people they pulled out of poverty. Um, mm -hmm. They keep the, the number 800 million people. Um, if you bring people out of poverty and into the middle class, you will create a very hefty consumer, uh, a consumer uh, economy and consumer driven economy. And that will drive economic growth. You don't need to have billionaires and multimillionaires and poor people. You can definitely create a middle class that will satisfy that agenda just as much. And that seems to be something that they're trying to pull off with this common po prosperity initiative. And I think entertainment, because it's so high profile and so in everybody's faces, is starting to get a bit of the wrath and the throwback of that common prosperity initiative. Interesting. Now, before prior to the episode happened to Zhao Wei, there's another high profile actress called Fan Bingbing. Her, she's been heavily punished, penalized by um, allegedly evading tax. Um, I was wondering, because before, when, when that happened, everyone was like, oh, that's a you know, singulated um, incident. It was not tied into a bigger campaign. But now with what happened to Zhao Wei, and, and coincidentally, they all start in this very big hit in China, the, the, the show called My Fair Princess. They're, they're in the same cast. So I was wondering, is Fan Bingbing's tax evasion saga a sort of a prelude to the online disappearance of Zhao Wei in August? Um, I would say, and by the way, over my shoulder here, you can see the Chinese poster for Iron Man 3, which Fan Bing Bing happened to be in the China version of that movie. Oh, yeah, um, I think I saw that. I think it's yeah, a, you know, a, few, a few seconds of Fan exactly. Bing Bing. Yeah, she wasn't in there long, but she was in there, and that was back in 2012. And I even remember back then when we were shooting those scenes, she had a huge entourage, and she had this very sort of um, almost larger-than-life type of celebrity quotient to her. And she mm. hadn't been the big celebrity in 2012 that she became years after that. And I think a lot of that, and I'm not saying Fan Bing Bing is the root of the cause, but I'm just saying she was one of the members of the entertainment community that tended to showcase this um, very big opulence in regards to actors, directors, writers, producers, studio executives in the film industry. And it was starting to rub raw nerves inside the Chinese Communist Party. And you started to see a crackdown on that. And they actually did crack down quite extensively on that wealth via taxes that they put mm -hmm. on many parts of the entertainment business. And in fact, some of the people that had very, very difficult tax bills to deal with were not even able to afford them. It wasn't all the super uber rich. It was more of the middle class layer also of that business. And you saw a lot of people sort of leave it. And, and it has shrank quite a bit. And a lot of the speculation we saw in the Shenzhen exchange around a lot of those uh, media entities started to deflate and we saw stock prices dive quite precipitously including um you know companies like wanda or mm. uh 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 wow uh brothers polybona etc so it was a real real strong signal from the chinese communist party that you need to start thinking you're in it together with the rest of the population Otherwise, we're going to crack down, and we've seen that now expand to various other parts of more of a uh, media-adjacent type of industry, and we're starting to see it even in other industries that have nothing to do with entertainment. I think 
Beijing, the, um, the regular um, practice of the central government is usually they will make certain message they want to convey to the population very clear. Um, for example, uh, in the case of Fan Bingbing, very clear she was penalized for allegedly evading taxes. And to these um, big companies, like big tech companies and big media entities you just mentioned, it's very clear that they want, uh, they, 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 they want to prioritize the need to redistribute income and redistribute wealth across the society. But in the case of Zhao Wei, no clear reason was given, and everyone is simply speculating here. Apart from the so-called unhealthy celebrity culture that was cited. So what does, you know, what does Beijing try to achieve and can achieve by playing ambiguity in this case? Well, first of all, you probably would know better than I do if we're going to speculate about what the Chinese Communist Party is, is, is up to and what they're thinking. I mean, I'm here in Los Angeles, California. I've done two decades worth of business between the U.S. and China. And all I can do is sort of look at the most macro sort of point of view that I can of what maybe they're thinking and deduce what my conclusion is from that. But there's plenty of experts that dive in even deeper. Um, mm. If I am trying to figure out exactly why they are doing some of this, and in, and in fact, you bring her up and she's, you know, uh, there's been speculation that it had something to do with maybe her ties to Alibaba or or whatever. But the the bottom line is, I think the Chinese Communist Party and the Chinese government has always been in this um, state of ambiguity when it comes to penalizing companies or people or entities. In fact, I would use Disney, for example, around the Mulan episode last yeah. year, about a year ago, Mulan came out. There was a big geopolitical firestorm over yeah. um, Xinjiang province officials that were thanked in the credits. It became something bigger than just a tempest in a teapot because it was talked about in press around the world, not just in China. Mm. Chinese Communist Party seemed to get rather angry about that. At that very same time, in Hong Kong, where you are right now, the Chinese Communist Party and the Hong Kong government took away from Disney the expansion rights for their Hong Kong theme park. They had rights to expand that park. They took them away right around that same time. Now, my question is, did, was Disney told that that was a punishment for what happened with Mulan and why they couldn't contain it? Or was it just coincidence? And that's one of the issues that is um, really, really difficult, about, uh, difficult in regards to trying to understand what the Chinese Communist Party is up to. They sort of like to make you feel as if you're sitting on a bar stool and you're leaning back and you almost fall back, but you don't quite. That's that feeling they always want you to have. They never want you to know exactly what they're retaliating against and what might just be simply coincidence. Mm, keeping you at your toes, right? All right, let's pick up the discussion after the break. Talk to Walk. We'll be back in a moment. Don't go away.